Good morning, Snow Siberian and Seven Germans. Welcome you back to our sailing catamaran. Everything at once. Morning shower, morning exercise, and discussing our further plans. Did you ever saw a whale shark? These beautiful creatures are the most largest of their family. They can reach more than 40 feet and weigh more than 20 tons. The Philippines are well known by being home territory for a few kinds of sharks, including whale sharks, and here you can even swim with them. The other day in the early morning we decided to visit this famous place, where you can swim with whale sharks. Dinghy, a walk to the city. Taking a public bus and 20 minutes later we were at the place. First thing we saw, one million of Chinese and Korean tourists arriving by dozens of organized tour buses. After the first shock passed, we looked around and noticed construction areas everywhere. Future hotels, famous coffee and fast food chains and of course souvenir shop next to another souvenir shop, all selling the famous I swam with a whale shark t-shirt. At the close shore we looked at the long line of waiting boats full of tourists in swimming vests. We took our decision immediately. We do not support this kind of explorative business. Feeding the sharks, attracting them in a prepared bay and changing their natural journey just for making some quick money with tourists that are allowed to jump for only two minutes into the water from overcrowded boats just to make a weird selfie? No thanks. We turned back to our catamaran. On our further way we passed this spot from seaside. Stayed for a while aside, looking on the sad circus and went on. Almost every night we went ashore for dinner, trying different places and get acquainted with the local cuisine. One night on one of the local food markets we had a very tasty fish from the barbecue. I've never had anywhere before. Unfortunately, no one I've asked to tell me its name. Seems like the guys appreciated the local beer. From my side, I liked local apple soda. Frank? 
Next day, we started quite early, as our skipper has planned to show us another great spot on the southeast side of Cebu, Balikasak Island. The whole day we didn't have much wind. Actually, we didn't have wind the whole week. So all day of motoring and after lunch, we arrived to the place. Set up on a mooring line, divided into two teams, and started our dives. I was down with Burton Tommy, a very experienced dive instructor and owner of the dive center in Cricket's Heights House. We descended on minus 20 meters. The visibility was good, but not excellent. Around 20 minutes, something on the bottom attracted Tommy's attention. I was then behind and making some shots around. Suddenly he turned to me and showed me his fists. Silly me, but I didn't get it. Attention! Now you are watching the footage that almost costs me my fingers. I saw behind Tommy a big and very fast fish making round circles. Switched on my camera and started to film it. The fish became aggressive and started to make circles around me. And show me it's quite an attractive tease. I was like frozen or hypnotized. Next moment Tommy reached me, grabbed my hand and I hid it behind him. He turned on his back and pulled in front of him his fins, which this hungry monster butted with great appetite. It was a tricky fish and looks like it protected its nest. I learned my lesson, how to avoid being beaten and kept all fingers at their place. Lay down, watch her. Are your fingers making fists? Give her your fists. Don't go neither up or down. Swim out on the same level from her territory that it looks like a thing. Since then I'm diving with closed fists. Really. Another dinner ashore. New places, new bars, same company.
One thing Bert and me made right before our sailing week. We booked flights for the last week of our holiday because of economical reason. Even we love to be flexible and spontaneous. During our first week, we experienced that flight prices at this time of the year on the Philippines rise up to double in the last 3-5 days before departure. Our flight to Palawan Island was at 3 p.m. But our skipper told us that we won't reach the marina so early. That's why we had to leave our sailing and diving gang already one day earlier than planned. After six intensive days full of emotions and new impressions, with a very friendly and funny team, we had to say goodbye and went on with our trip. Just the two of us. So we used our last day of week two to enjoy Bohol Island. We rented a motorbike and discovered a busy area. There are plenty of viewpoints placed quite far away from the central part of the touristic area. After a couple of hours of riding, we reached our target. Bohol is famous by its unusual landscapes. Nowhere else you will find such kind of shapes of the hills that indeed look like chocolate hills. We are in Bohol. We talk somewhere. Chocolate too. Just behind us. Yes, touristic. Yes, beautiful. And there are woods, look like woods in Canada or Europe, just next to the Asian jungle. Really worth to visit. Let's go back for having a good dinner. Early morning, we were at the pier staying in the long line for buying the tickets to Cebu. Hmm, that's right, you can buy tickets only at the same day. Three hours later we arrived well back in Cebu city. We took a local bus from the pier to the airport. Where are we are now? We are in a bus again, in some bus from somewhere to somewhere. No, we just, we just saved 300 pesos by going to a local bus to the airport in Cebu. So, see you in At 6 p.m. our tired bodies finally made themselves comfortable in the plane. Bye bye Cebu, welcome Palawan Islands. After quite much of activity in week 2, our plan for the third week was as at the beginning, doing a lot of nothing. What did I know about this island? Almost nothing. Like 
Except every second someone on every social media travel group recommended to go there, as it's one of the most quiet places in Southeast Asia with absolutely untouched nature. Sounds perfect to us, I thought. And here we are. The largest city of the island, Puerto Princes, is the international airport. By the way, it wasn't easy to find a proper place with a reasonable price. In the last years, the Philippines became more and more popular to travelers, and the prices increased so fast and almost reached the level of Phuket, if I would compare. Our home for the next two days, a little oasis in the middle of nowhere. After spending a couple of days in sleeping, eating, working, we were ready to go to our final destination, the north of Palawan, El Nido. Another public bus? Why not? This time the whole ride took us almost six hours. Enough time to have a feeling why this island they call the lost paradise. After six hours of winding and bumpy roads, a margarita with this wonderful view was a proper earned reward. Cheers. What do I remember about this place? Lazy mornings. Our everyday long walk along the beach because I booked the very last hotel far away from the center to be away from tourists. <laughs> Cozy and stylish coffee shops that attract backpackers from all over the world by good coffee and stable Wi Fi. Oh, the pizza! Filipinos knows how to cook Italian food. And thanks to Bert, we discovered a very cozy place with a real big oven and a good choice of tasty pizzas. later he ate everything <laughs> show me your belly show me your poor boy <laughs> If you spend one day on each island of the Philippines, it would take you almost 21 years to visit them all. As we don't like walking the touristic paths and didn't feel well with booking one of the four day trips offered on every corner of the middle, we booked a private boat trip to Fabrice and picked by ourselves. Yeah. 
We shared course with another young couple from Sweden that we accidentally have met on one night at the beach. It was the perfect day trip. Sunny weather, good company and enough space, privacy and silence in the carport. So perfect that I forgot my big hammer at the hotel. We started early and we already left our hearts at the very first place, Pink's Boat Town. The whole island was totally empty and just for us. Only bounty palms and pristine beaches with crystal turquoise water. One hundred percent picture postcard view. Also, we liked very much another small rocky island, where our crew prepared and served for us lunch. The name of this tiny but scenic place is Antalula. You should definitely put it on your musty list if you travel the Philippines one day. of Antalula, it can be made a wish to come back here one day, but with Gulliver and by Lilliput. We left our body at home with good friends. They have two kids, so Guli had a very pleasant company, as he loves children. But we really miss these four kilos of happiness so much. Look at that, it seems like he missed us as well. So, see you somewhere. Don't forget, leave us a like and push the subscribe button if you don't want to miss our next episode. Because soon we will tell you how we have found, chosen and purchased our new home. Lilliput. Bye.